Welcome back once again to Inner Strong Games Presents. My name is Richard. This is my co-host Piper. Meow. Meow. It's for Baby Kitty this week. We are continuing the countdown of my top 100 games as of year 2012. We've gone through 70 games already. We're into the top 30, the final 30. These games are completely awesome games. These games, as it used our word amazing, because amazing gets overused, but I seem to be overusing awesome, so I'll go ahead and throw amazing out. These are incredible games. So let's get to them. Let's not waste any more time. And let's get to n my number 30. <laughs> next week. My number 30 game is Star Wars X-Wing, the miniature game. This is one of those games that I wasn't sure I was going to like. There's actually going to be a couple on this list where I wasn't sure I was going to like. This one... I played Star Warriors when I was younger, so I figured, eh, it's just going to be Star Warriors rehashed. This is Star Warriors rehashed and improved upon to such a level, you can't even believe it. One of the things that makes X-Wing so outstanding is just the quality of the miniatures. These are some of the, there's the Falcon. You get a Millennium Falcon for this game. <laughs> Star Warriors, you actually just have like little tokens. Here's a Slave One. Now look at the detail on these models. This is, I mean, it's Fantasy Flight. But this is just, this is incredible. This, this alone is reason to get this game just for the models. If you've never played the game, pre-painted miniatures like that. Time. It is what we played last time. Hey. In X-Wing, you're going to take the side of either the Rebellion or the Empire. And you're going to have space combat. It's just a space um. combat game. <sighs> but what's really neat about it is that yeah. they've gone as far as to give several... Characters, so you, you can be Luke Skywalker, you can be big, you can be Han Solo in the Falcon, you can be Lando in the Falcon, you can be Boba Fett, you can be, you can't be Jango Fett because this is the Rebellion era. Sorry, episode one and two favorites. By this time, Jango's long gone. Now, obviously, this is before Return of the Jedi because Slay's one's to one. But, but if you are an episode uh, two fan, the bombs, all the little, uh, Actually, they they showed that Slave One can do. They are included in this game because, as with any mini game, you can build up your squad. So you, there are starter sets you can just like go next swing down and go to town. But you can set. I'm going to do a hundred point squad, and so both of us do hundred points. And so we can build our squads. Each hero, each character, whether you're Luke Skywalker or you're just Red Squadron pilot, has a score, and so that score gets added to your overall points. Then you can have you have upgrades that each X wing can take depending on the uh, person you're using. So like a Luke Skywalker is obviously going to get more upgrades than Red Squadron Pilot. And then a lot of them are also ship specific. So you can build up your squad. Give them concussion missiles. You can give them R2 droids. You can give them special, your pilot special skills. And you're going to fly around using arcs, measurement arcs. I should have uh, gotten some of this stuff out beforehand. Uh, the, each there's little pieces of cardboard. So you're gonna set it in the front of the ship, and you're gonna help move it around. So it's not a lot of arbitrary measurements. Like, oh, you should be here, or you should be here. No, you know, you put the I'm moving five. So you put the five down. You put the at the front of the ship. You place the back of the ship in front of it. This game, I can't, I can't say enough great things about this game. This is if you love Star Wars, you should own this game. If you love tactical starfighter combat you should own this game if you just like cool minis you should own this game there's no reason you should not own this game why are you still watching this video go out buy this game now and then come back and watch again that's my number 30 x-wing the manager's game my next game my number 29 game is cosmic encounter i'm going to pause briefly to say i don't know if you're paying attention if you Saw the last episode, this is King of Tokyo, this is the game Piper's playing, so go back and watch the previous episode to find out about that one. Right now I'm going to talk about Cosmic Encounter. Cosmic Encounter is the game, the ultimate game of negotiations. Because in Cosmic Encounter, everybody's going to be an alien race. And when I say everybody's going to be an alien race, I don't know how many times you would have to play this game 
to be the same alien race. This, this, these are the alien races that come with the base game. There are three expansions for this game. I don't have any expansions. Can you imagine how big this deck is once you have all those expansions? I know there are some of you out there that have everything for it. And so, yes, you know. There, you can play this game hundreds of times and never be the same alien. Never have the same combination of aliens being played. And each alien has a different power and does something different. But what everybody is trying to do is conquer the most planets or be a part of conquering the most planets. You want to have the majority shareholder. You want to have ships. You want to have your planets. Let's get some planets out. Let's get some purple planets out. So I'm going to have my planets. Not my planets. I'm going to have ships. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do each turn is I'm going to say, I'm going to draw a card. It's going to tell me who I'm going to attack. Or I might get to choose someone to attack, depending on the card I draw. And I'm going to say, oh, thank you. I'm going to attack yellow. I'm sending four ships to attack yellow. I do those. You want to do those? You do those. There you go. Have at. Go to town. Now I'm going to send four ships to attack yellow. Who wants to help me? And we'll go around the table and see who wants to help me attack yellow. And then yellow is going to say, well, who wants to help me defend? So whose side do you want to be on? Well, I would be the attackers because well, you can help land ships there also. However, maybe you want to help defend because you don't want purple getting any more planets. The way the combat works is everybody has attack cards that you're going to play down. The attack cards... I uh, just have numbers on them, I think from like 0 to, I think, up to 40. You're going to lay those down. Whoever has the higher score is going to win. So who do you think has the best chance of winning? Because whoever loses is going into the nexus. And then everything, your ships are lost. And you get back one per turn, but it's going to take a while. This game, there's deals being made all the time. Non-binding deals. Again, this is ultimate negotiation game. If you help me, I'll do this. If you help me, I'll do this. There's, you can get tech in this game. You can purchase tech. You can get extra powers for you. So you have regular powers. You can play bonus powers for your aliens. This is an incredible game. This, this is the game. It's this. Go get it. Again, while you're out getting X-Wing, get, get Cosmic Encounter. Get, these are awesome games. Don't scream. We gotta scream. This is exciting. This is so exciting. Okay, I'll calm down. Go get my number 29. Cosmic Encounter. Now! My number 28 game is another great one. Although it doesn't look it from the cover. Power Grid. And I'm not just saying this because I work in the electric industry. Power Grid is another game that snuck up on me. I didn't think I was going to like it. I loved it. What makes Power Grid so awesome is the auction ability and the resources that you have to use to power it. You are going to be purchasing uh, the right to supply electricity to cities. And how you do that is you need power plants to do that. So you're going to be auctioning power plants. You might need oil to power them. You might need coal to power them. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe garbage or nuclear energy or wind energy, depending on the plant. You're going to deal out the plants in a random order, but you can only deal on the three cheapest ones to be bid. It's an auction game. You're going to auction off the three cheapest plants at any time. And then you're going to, the other ones, you'll be able to see what's coming up, but you can't bid on them yet. And they may or may not be replaced by, as you add other plants. So you might think, oh, I'm going to be able to get that one next turn. No, here comes a plant that fits in between that number sequence. That one's going to be bid on instead. The other, the other trick to it is that each, each plant, for instance, this one can supply, it takes you t uh, one garbage to supply one, one city. And you want to try and be able to power 17 cities. So obviously as you go by, what happened? What happened? I don't know. Oh, I uh, you're going to need plants these. that can power... I can these. You, okay? you do that. You can play with those. Uh, like this one powers, this one power five cities. So you want to be able to uh, generate power for as many cities, but you're going to have to be able to buy the resources that can power the uh, that you need, whether it's the oil or the coal. So you're gonna have to, you need your money to buy the resources, you need your money to place the city, to buy the rights to build in that city. And the game goes through three phases. So the, the first phase, you only uh, there's only one per uh, one 
house. They have houses. One house per city. The second yeah, two, and then the last round three. Yeah. And then just because you have all those cities out there, you may not be able to power them all. You have to be able to power 17 cities to win this game. It's that that back and forth, that can I do it? Oh, and yes. You have to be able to pay to connect the cities too. This game is just... Go, go, go. There's just so much going on. This auction mechanic that you can see what's coming up. That you have to, there's a market, a resource market that you can only buy what's available at the price that it currently is. Can you afford the resources at that price? Do you drive the market down so that your opponents can't buy it at that price? Again, go get Power Grid. This is, or play it. Go find someone who has it or go get it yourself. Play Power Grid. This is a wonderful experience. Uh, and I'm, again, I'm not just saying that. This is for those of you in the Texas area. <coughs> Luminate the game. I'll say that. My number twenty-eight. Yes, okay, my twenty-eight. Everyone, power grid. We just all the way up. Seven, seven, water. All right. My number twenty-seven game is. Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders is a civilization building game using a card drafting technique. If you're not familiar with card drafting, that means I'm going to have a hand of cards, say seven cards, and I'm going to take one of those to keep for myself, and then I'm going to pass off the remaining six cards. I'll then receive six cards from another player, I'll keep one of those for myself and hand off those five, and they'll go around the table like that until you have usually two cards left. You'll take the last one to keep yourself, and then the final card will get discarded. In Seven Wonders, this is done to require to get resources, like here's wood, to build up your army. First, this one will give you one combat. To build up uh, technology, academics. Here's a compass or a gear. To get advanced resources like paper or cloth. Or to build uh, specific buildings such as uh, there's a theater, an amphitheater. Let's see if I can find one. Here's, here we go. An altar. You might maybe you can build an altar, and those give you instant points. And so you're going to you're going to be in control of a civilization at the time. Maybe you'll be Babylon, or maybe your Rhodes. And you're going to build your civilization throughout three ages. You're going to have <coughs> three rounds of drafting seven cards each round, and then each. Uh, each round that you're drafting, you'll have to pay the cost of the card. So brick is free, but the scriptorium, you'll need paper first. I don't know if you can see it. It's up here in the corner. Paper. But you're laying these cards down to get the resources to be able to buy better cards and better cards and prove yourself. Throughout the game, you'll be able to have a chance to build wonders, as they call them, down here along the bottom of the, of the player board. You just place a card face down. You get those benefits. You don't have to build wonders. But it's another way to get points. The player with the most points to end, at the end of the game wins after three ages. The game is is great. If you like civilization game, this is probably one of the the fastest ones out there, one of the easiest ones to teach. This is a great gateway game. For people that aren't familiar with games, there's already two expansions out, Leaders and Cities. A very easy game to get into. No. No, it is. It really is. No, I get, I get some of these. Oh, okay. You're just playing with those. I thought you were commenting on Seven Wonders. Because Seven Wonders is a great game. Again, go out. Get it. One to, a, a great one to play with family. A great one to play with friends. It plays very quickly. Around 30 minutes. Again, can't say enough about it. Go, no. go try it. Go play it. Go buy it. I number 27. Seven Wonders. My number 26 game is one that I didn't think I'd like at first. That's Summer Awards. Summer Awards, I played the iOS version first. You get two two factions on there, the Fire Elves and I think the Tundra Orcs. I didn't really care for it on the iOS version. I was very hesitant about picking up the Master Set. But everybody raved about this game. And you know what? They're right! This is an awesome game. Son of Wars is, is almost like a miniature skirmish game, but you're using cards. And these, each car, uh, faction has its own set of cards. The master set comes with, I think, six, six or seven different factions. 
every faction plays different. It has a different feel. It's okay, the basic game is played. You have your your faction. You have common cards. You have champion cards. And you have a summoner. You can draw cards into your hand. You're going to have to summon them to the field. And so in order to do that, you have to either discard cards into your summon your magic pile to use the summon, or as you kill opponents, you can use those cards. Okay. <laughs> or you can, as you uh, dispatch opponents, you'll add their cards to your magic pile. And you're using those cards, that magic pile, to summon your troops to the field. And the goal is to take out the other player's summoner. Once you do that, you win. Again, this game totally took me by surprise, especially after the, the experience I had with it on, on the iOS. Uh, we've played, I can't tell you how many times we've played this at lunch. I've got a, I think we've played through all the factions a couple of times in here. Uh, they have reinforcement decks, so you can uh, kind of be a little bit more creative. We'll do a little bit of drafting and deck building for your, your factions. There's uh, two basic sets, and then the master set, and those faction decks can be bought independently, or independently of each other, so you don't need to buy each set. Uh, the game is only, originally only to be played with two players, but the, you can buy a, a separate board, so you can add another player, so you can have four up to four going. <coughs> Again, this totally took my storm. Those of you who like mini games but don't like the in, uh, the investment. This is a great skirmish level game using cards instead of miniatures. One I highly, highly, highly recommend. Can't recommend it enough. My number 26, Summoner Wars. My number 25 game. Ooh, 25. We're in the final quarter. The top 25 games. These are going to be like so off the off the chain. Number 25, Kingsburg. Kingsburg is the game of, it's a worker placement using dice. Using dice to allocate your workers. You're going to roll the dice and then depending on what you roll, you can use that combination of either single or multiple dice to claim the uh, workers for the king, the uh, king's court, the king's informants, the king's adjutants, if you will. There's a quick look at, at them all, numbered 1 through 18. Each one's going to give you a different resource. You're going to use those resources to build different buildings. Here's a quick look at the sheets, the game sheets. You can see you can they have different tracks. It doesn't matter what track you, you go by. You can use multiple tracks, but you always have to start from this column and work your way across no matter what row you're on. Games played across the course of five years. Each season you're going to roll dice and try and influence the king's advisors and get those resources that you need. And then at the end of each year, you're going to be attacked. So you can either opt to build up your defenses or you can try and influence the king to help you with the defenses. Uh, I think they actually, in one of the expansions they give you like victory points that you can use and you can use those victory points to add to your defense later on in the game. As the game goes on, you won't have them at the end, so be careful how you use them. But this is one of the, ah, wow, this is, I got this game many, many years ago. Uh, Play it. I can't tell you how many times I've, I've played this game. I just I love Kingsburg. Kingsburg is awesome. It's a great gateway game. It's a great one to get your family into. Look, look at him. Oh my goodness. Look at this. <laughs> that has nothing to do with Kingsburg. That's pretty cool. Nice going, Piper. It is pretty cool, but it's not as cool as Kingsburg. Kingsburg is another incredible game. A great gateway game. One I will probably play the rest of my life because it's that much fun. My number 25, Kingsburg. Hey. Mm, My number 24 game is the game of farming because everybody knows how much fun farming is. Believe it or not, it's pretty fun and it's at number 24 on my list. I'm not going to bust out Agricola because this is only part of the stuff that's in here. For me, what makes Agricola so unique is that it's another worker placement game. Again, I love worker placement. But the options are not set on the board. Instead, they're cards. You can be dealing those cards out onto the board. So while there are a few core places to play each turn, they'll be the same for every game. The rest of this can be played out across the year. So during the first year, first phase of the game, first season of the game, uh, you're going to have options. And there'll be a certain number of options. You'll see a lot of those options come up because there's only a certain number. 
excuse me, but you don't know what order they're going to come up in. Uh, they also have occupations that you can play with. So you can do the things they have. Buildings you can build. You're building a farm, so you're going to have to grow crops on your farm. You can grow animals on your farm. You have to feed your people on the farm because everybody knows that people have to eat. There's just so much going on in Agricola. Again, I'll probably do another series just on Agricola itself. For now, know that it's it was number one on the Board Game Geek for quite a while. It's like in their top three or four, I think. If that doesn't, uh, if, you know, if my word isn't good enough for you, and it probably isn't. But go check it out for yourself. My number 24, Agricola. My number 23 game is <coughs> Survive, Escape from Atlantis. In Survive, you are going to be on an island that is sinking. And the, the way they've done the sinking island is actually pretty cool because there's beach tiles and there's forest tiles. And there's mountain tiles. And I don't know if I can really show here on here, but they're at different thicknesses. So as they're set up next to each other, you actually get the impression that the trees are higher than the beach and the beach is higher than the mountains. And that's the order that the island will be sinking because as the game goes on, you're going to be taking away a tile each turn. And on the back of that tile is going to be an instruction of some kind. Like in this case, it's, you're going to place a whale or maybe you'll place a shark. And maybe they'll get a special action that you can do later on, like kill a whale, kill a shark, move th move sharks or whales around, <coughs> move boats around. Or actually, you can move boats around for free. You can add a boat. Move the boat extra spaces. But the island is sinking, and you have a certain number of people on that island that you're trying to get to the corners of the board to help them escape. And these people have numbers. That one's got a one. This one's got a three. They have numbers on their bases that... You can look at as you're setting them down, but once they're down on the island, <coughs> you can't look at the bottom of the, uh, the people anymore. So you just have to remember, was that a one? Was that a three? Was that a five? And you want to try and get them off the island because only the people that make it to the uh, corners of the board where the safe islands are at, they're the ones that are going to be scoring you points. The ones that get eaten by sharks or by sea monsters because, yes, there are sea monsters in the game. Oh, but there's whales <sighs> and sharks <laughs> and more whales. Mm. Oh, yeah, okay. And boats. And they can go on the boats. People can go on the boats. There you go. This game is very cutthroat. And I say that because there's, for some reason, there's nothing more enjoyable than pulling an island tile out from underneath the opponent and watching them drop into the water. Or sending a shark to where they're swimming. Or sending a whale to their boat. Or blocking them off with a sea monster. I, I know all that sounds like a lot of weird stuff going on for a family game. But this is a great family game too. This game is a blast. And it plays quick. It only plays about 30 minutes. It's It plays two to four players. There, this is like the second edition, the anniversary edition, and the old edition they had like a five to six player expansion, and they had some other expansions. <clears throat> I'm really, really hoping that those come back out for this edition too, because this game is a riot. This game is awesome. This game is my number 23. As I look off to the side and double check, yes, number 23, Survive, Escape from Atlantis. Go get it. My number 22 game is Libertalia. Libertalia is a pirate game of pirates sending their crew members to help divvy up the, the booty, the loot. In a vein sort of similar to uh, Citadels, which we talked about earlier, every pirate's going to have their crew, and everyone on the crew is going to have a number, a rank. The first player is going to deal out a certain number of cards, and then everybody else is going to go through their deck and deal out those same cards. So everybody is playing with the same crew. However, comma, each of those crew has another number down here. For instance, this one has a one. And this parrot, if I can find another parrot, of course not. Why would I be able to find another parrot? There we go. This parrot has a one, but this parrot has a two. That means that this parrot is more influential than this parrot. 
that's important because as you're laying everybody down, going for the, the treasure, <clears throat> you're going to lay them down not only in numerical order of which one's played. So if I play my parrot, that's number one. Someone else might play their first mate, that's number 28. So their first mate's going to have more power overall than the parrot. But if there are multiple parrots played down, the two, the more influential parrot will get uh, played before the other parrot. And so not only do those uh, things take in, come into effect, but there are, the game itself is played across um, a day, so to speak, or like a series of uh, conquests. So there's day actions, evening actions, and night actions. <clears throat> As you can see on the parrot, this parrot has a day action. This monkey has also has a day action. And then the first mate actually has an end of the game action. The way the game is played, you're going to lay these, these uh, crew people out on the ship. And they'll be set up in that, that top number order, this rank order up here. And then actually acting in reverse, they're going to execute their actions. So even though the higher ranking, uh, like the first mate, when it comes to choosing uh, the booty, and which of the treasures going to be, because it's going to be a pile of booty, uh, one for each person playing. So whoever has the highest number, they're going to get their choice of what they're going to take. But the powers are going to be triggered off the lower number first. So it's going to work this way and then back this way. <clears throat> so you may have a more, uh, the power of the lowers may be able to affect how things go. Or they're all like you may be able to whittle down some of the treasure, eliminate some things. This game, two players... It's fun. Three players, it's really fun. With six players, five players, four players, this game is it. I mean, there's not much more fun than having the, the treasure down there that everybody's fighting over because not all the treasure is good. There's cursed treasure. There's Spanish conquistadors that are going to kill your crew people. There's cursed treasure that take away points at the end of the game. There's the fact that everybody is using the same crew members, you kind of have an idea of what they're going to play, but trying to guess when they're going to play it, what's the influence that they have, and as the game progresses, you're going to draw three new ones, and so you're still going to have, everybody's going to have those same three new ones that they've drawn, but the ones they've already played, the rest of their hand may be different, so trying to keep track of who's got what, and how they're going to play it, when they're going to play it. Uh, really, a kind of a thought-provoking game, really can lead to some, some AP. But it's pirates, and it's collecting booty, and it's all your crew, and they all do something special, and it's great, and just go get it. Go buy it now. Like I said last time, go quit watching, go buy it, and then come back and keep watching. That's my number 22. Keep getting crazy. I keep getting crazy I, because I love this game. Libertalia, my number 22. And then, me. That brings me to my number 21. My number 21 game I have been playing for, I won't say how long, but I was at least before college. Maybe, actually, no, I take it back. Played for the first time in college. We played it every week in college, multiple times in the week. Bought it when I got back from college. Been playing it ever since. It's on its fourth edition now, and that's Talisman. A Talisman is one of the greatest adventure games ever, and I know I'm getting a lot of boos and hisses out there. This is one of the greatest adventure games ever. I don't care what you say. Fancy Flight has made it even better. And this game is, I mean, this is, you want variety in your game. There are more characters now. This is, these are just all the characters that you can be in this game. Except for the frogs. Well, you might be the frog. So here, there. Those are all the characters that you can be in this game. Each one doing something different. In Talisman, you are an adventurer, and you're going about the countryside, trying to build up your strength, trying to build up your magic ability, your craft, and you're trying to acquire equipment to buy and fight monsters and visit places because you're trying to get a talisman. And once you have the talisman, you can go to the Crown of Command, and then you can start attacking everybody, and whoever is the last one standing wins. But that's just the base game. In this version, they have multiple endings. I think there's maybe 20 different endings you can have. And it's just way better than it ever was. It was great when I was in college and Games Workshop had it out. Except for Timescape, we won't even talk about Timescape. We'll pretend it never happened. But Fantasy Flight has taken this game and they have expanded it. 
They have the additional boards that wrap around the main board. This game is... Uh, my friends and I get it. My brother comes over. We always want to play Talisman. We're always asking me to play. Let's play Talisman. Let's play Talisman. And we play Talisman. And it's great. And it's fun. And if you don't like it, I can't help you. But you should. You should like it. And you should love it. And you should try out the Fantasy Flight version because it's awesome. And it's my number 21. And there. That's all I can say. And I'm still gonna read about Talisman. I didn't even bring in the miniatures. Look at this is the miniatures these days. They're not cardboard cutouts like the were in Game Workshop. Look, that's a real dragon rider. There's a werewolf. Did you take the werewolf? Who's got the werewolf? Someone here's a werewolf. You can be a werewolf. You, you can, there. Look, you can be a werewolf. You can turn your character into a werewolf. Or you can become a werewolf. There's, you know, like there's gonna be frogs. There's wizards. There's, you know, knights riding on. This is. Again. Uh, I love Talisman. I've loved it for years. We're number 21. And I love you guys for, for hanging in, putting up with me, watching this. This has been a blast to do. Um, wow, we've done 80 games. 80 games so far. That means there's only 20 left to do. My top 20 games of all time uh, as of 2012. Um, thanks, everybody, for, for hanging with us, for watching us, for support, for telling your friends. Um, check out the website. Uh, follow us on Facebook, like us on Twitter, just spread the word. Uh, we got big things coming up. We've only got 20 games left to do on this one. Um, I don't know if I'm going to break the final. I might, so that might be three episodes left after this. Maybe the next uh, 20 through uh, 11, and then maybe break out that top 10 into two different episodes of five each. Uh, Piper will be with us, um, playing with the the game, showing you uh, how a three and a half year old interprets the rules. Uh, again, we'll probably do some game demos after this. Um, I think uh, we'll probably, uh, once this episode airs, we'll probably, on the website, I'll put up some of the choices of things we've been talking about. Um, uh, demoing, I know we got a couple of ideas. We've been banding them back and forth as the games we're going to play and some... And then we'll have a special episode that features nothing but Piper singing. Uh, once again, thanks. Uh, my name's Richard. This is Piper. Behind the scenes, you can't see him. Michael Head's... Behind the scene, there's his thumb. And his thumb will become more famous than, than anyone on this, on this game. You'll see him more in front of the camera once we start doing the game demos. Um, but for now, let's go ahead. We'll go ahead and say uh, goodbye. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.